energy. Let's start talking about it from the thing that comes in first, which is money. In 1972, the United States paid $4 billion for oil imports. That was equal to about 4.5% of our defense budget for that year in that year's dollars. Um, in 1999, it was $40 billion, which was about 15% of our defense budget for that year. Last year, it was $342 billion, which was close to 70% of our defense budget. And this year, it's going to be about 120% uh, of our defense budget, uh, o over $600 billion. Um, the, so not only are we actually now funding both sides in the war on terror, that's been actually going on for a while, uh, but now we're funding the other side more than we're funding our own side. And we are funding the other side. And th this cannot be avoided. Now, let's start with non-OPEC. What you see there is that over this period of a third of a century, the non-OPEC oil production doubles in size. It goes from around 24 million barrels a day to about 45 million barrels a day. Doubles. There's a little ups and downs, but it's basically a nice rational curve uh, showing the growth of a growing industry feeding a growing market over a significant span of time. Now look at the OPEC production. It's up, it's down, it's wild, it's all over the place. It shows no rational trend whatsoever. Okay, that's in accord with the arbitrary decisions of the cartel leaders to turn production on or off at their semi-annual meetings in order to send the price of oil up or down and to try to harvest profit at higher prices and then that sends the price down and then they cut production again and sends it up and so forth um, and making very strategic moves. That, that's the first thing you see there is tactical manipulation of the market. The other thing you see there is even more amazing, which is look at this. In 1973, the OPEC oil production was 30 million barrels a day. In 2007, it's 30 million barrels a day. That is, despite the passage of a third of a century, during which time the world economy has doubled in size, okay, OPEC production does not increase at all. Despite the fact that they're sitting on top of 80% of the world's oil reserves, including all the easiest to drill stuff. Today, big oil, is bigger than the United States government. Okay? And OPEC is 60% the size. Okay? That's in terms of cash flow. In terms of free energy of cash that can be thrown around, they're far more powerful because most of the US government cash, of course, is committed in various programs. They can't just take two and a half trillion dollars and say, well, let's spend it on this today instead of that. Okay? There's only a small fraction of that can be redeployed. Okay? So this is an enormous financial power has been created in the world more powerful than the United States government. Okay? That did not exist as recently as, in this sense, uh, on this scale, as recently as, as five years ago. Now, that brings us to the next issue, which is the takeover threat. This year, OPEC is going to clear about one and a half trillion dollars in net export profits. Okay? For comparison, the total worth of the U.S. Fortune 500 before last week was about $18 trillion. Okay? So putting aside the depressed valuations of the moment, okay, at their current rate of profit, the OPEC countries will amass enough cash to get majority control of every company in the U.S. Fortune 500 within six years. That means control of the corporate lobbyists. That means control over the dominant media in the country. It effectively means control over the political processes of the country. So our uh, independence is at stake here. And this could happen even faster precisely because this looting is causing the companies to lose value and it will be able to buy them cheaper than their current or recent valuations would imply. Okay. Um, the, uh, you know, with less than a day's profit, OPEC today could buy General Motors. Okay. Uh, now, are they preparing to do such takeovers? Yes, they are. You may have heard about sovereign wealth funds. 
That's what these things do. The Saudis are putting together a $900 billion sovereign wealth fund. Various other OPEC powers are putting together sovereign wealth funds in the $100 billion class as well. And they've got plans. They were involved in the Bear Stearns takeover, and they're going to be involved in other banking takeovers uh, as the current uh, economic havoc unfolds. So let's talk about that. Is there a relationship between what we've seen over the past couple of weeks in this country with the stock market and the rest and OPEC? Yes, there is a direct relationship. Okay. This year, Americans are going to pay over $600 billion for foreign oil plus another $400 billion for domestic oil. That's a trillion dollars Americans are going to pay for oil this year. For comparison, in 1999, we paid $80 billion for foreign and domestic oil combined. That's a $900 billion increase in our oil bill. Okay. That's $3,000 a person for 300 million Americans. $3,000 a person for every man, woman, and child in the country. $12,000 for a family of four. The average American worker makes $45,000 a year before taxes, perhaps thirty-five dollars after taxes. There's a third of disposable income is going for oil, up from 3% in 1999. Is it any wonder they're not buying houses? So this tax increase, which is equal in scale, by the way, to a 40% increase in income tax across the board in the United States in terms of its removal of discretionary income from the population. Okay? This is big enough to cause a collapse in the housing market, which it has done. You collapse the housing market, you collapse the mortgage market, the mortgages become worthless, the mortgage-backed securities become worthless, the banks holding them become worthless, and you have an ongoing banking collapse. And this is happening here, it's happening in Europe as well. This is not just a function of particular appointments that were made by the Bush administration or a lack of oversight by Barney Frank or various personalities that are blaming each other at the moment. Okay, because this is happening in lots of countries. Because they're all being taxed by this same process. The United States is being hit for a trillion for oil. The world as a whole is being hit for four trillion this year. In 1999, the world as a whole paid 350 billion for its oil. So, follow the money. This is collapsing housing values everywhere and therefore the banking systems which are leveraged on those. Now this situation, unless it is corrected, promises to get worse, not better. Well, it's the same with fuels. There are four suits. There's oil, there's coal, there's natural gas, and there's biomass. And right now, oil is Trump. And the reason why oil is Trump is because while there's any number of ways to make electricity, you can make it from any of the fuels, as well as from nuclear power, or solar, or wind, geothermal, some other ways, hydroelectric, um, right now, from a practical point of view, speaking in the large, there's only one way to make anything move on the surface of the earth, and that is with petroleum products. That is, cars, trucks, airplanes, even things like ships and trains that used to move by coal now move by oil. Okay? So oil is Trump. It's the thing that moves military force. It's the thing that moves commerce. It's the thing that moves everything. You can't make a move without it. Okay? And unfortunately, oil is the suit in which the enemy is long and we are short. Okay. And we can't win the game playing in their Trump suit. Okay. Can't be done. If we want to win the game, we have to shift it out of their Trump suit into one in which we have equal or better chances. Now, for instance, if coal was Trump, we'd be in excellent shape. The United States has terrific coal reserves as well as coal mining capability. Many of our allies do as well. We'd be very strong. Uh, if natural gas for Trump, eh, we so-so. Not really that great, but better off than we are in oil. We're actually importing 18% of our natural gas right now. Um, uh, T. Boone Pickens is wrong when he says we have uh, shifting our cars to natural gas will solve this problem. It will just be shifting one dependency to another one. Um, the, the, but it is true that if natural gas were Trump, we'd be better off than we are at the moment. Uh, if biomass were Trump, well then we'd be in excellent shape. The United States has terrific agricultural potential, uh, as well as other biomass potential, and many of our allies do as well. Uh, 
Uh, and of course, if biomass were trumped, there's a whole bunch of other countries that right now don't really have very good hands at all, would have some uh, reasonably good cards. Uh, tropical agricultural countries, for example, third world countries in Africa, South America, South Asia, uh, would all of a sudden uh, start looking a lot better than they do at the moment. Uh, Saudi Arabia, not so hot. Um, so the question is, how do we shift the Trump suit? That's the key to energy victory. Well, here's my one point program for doing this. The United States Congress should pass a law requiring that all new cars sold, not made, sold in the United States be fully flex fueled. Now, what is a flex fuel car? <laughs> 